So in the previous video, we talked about how to wire our Cortex for our VEX. In this one, we're going to talk about how to uh, set that up in our Robot C. So if you go to your PLTW apps folder on your desktop, you're going to open up and you're going to see a graphical Robot C for VEX. We do not want that one. So the first one listed here, we do not want. What we want is Robot C for VEX Robotics 4.x. So when you open that up, it's going to load this. Now, we need to configure this program to our computer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're kind of going to come up here to Robot. We're going to go to uh, Platform Type. We're going to change this to 2.0 Cortex. I'm going to come back to Platform Type. And then I'm going to change this to, again, I, I'm on 2.0 Cortex, and I need to then select the natural language PLTW option. I'm going to come back to robot. I'm going to go to cor uh, Cortex communication mode. Uh, we are going to be using the USB only mode. So again, I'm in USB only mode. I'm going to my platform type 2.0 Cortex natural language PLTW. Once I have that set, I can come up here and uh, open a sample program. Now, what I'm going to come down to is, again, you're going to see I'm in sample programs. I'm in my VEX 2.0. I'm going to scroll down until I find PLTW. I'm going to click on my PLTW template. There's two in here. You don't want to save over them uh, because it'll replace what you uh, have in there. And what it loads is this blank template in which we're going to program. We can see the backslash asterisk, asterisk bas backslash here, and everything is in green. What that means, this is a comment. This is for you to set up uh, what project you're working on, uh, putting in your task description, and a spot to write your pseudocode. The Cortex actually doesn't read this because it is a comment. This is for you to keep track of things. What you can see down here is our task main. Now, we've wired in all of our uh, robotic parts. But I need to come up here to motor and sensor setup. You're going to see I have digital sensors, analogs, and motors. So depending on where I put my motors in, in their corresponding ports. So if I wired into ports, let's say uh, we're using VEX 393 motors. If I wired them into uh, port 1 or port 2 and 3 with motor control switches, I'm going to call this motor 1. I can come down here and call it motor two. However I spell it, capitalization included, is how I have to program it. So please keep track of your spelling. So I've uh, set up my motors now. My analog sensors, let's say I did an in, uh, analog port one, I set up a potentiometer, and port two, I set up a line follower. So that line follower right here. I like to call my potentiometer potent one just because it's easier to spell and line one for my line follower, I can click apply. Now, if I had another line follower here, I would simply call it line two. Now again, spelling matters. I'm gonna come over here to my digital sensors. And again, I can say I have a touch switch and both of my bump and my limit switch are touch switch. So I'm gonna call this bump one. And I'm going to call this limit one. And then clicking apply. And again, if I had another uh, switch, I might call it limit two. Or, you know, you can call your switches or motors anything you want, but you might want to call it right motor, left motor, uh, but make it useful for how you're programming. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is. At the top of this template here, now I have all my motors set up. I can see that my uh, analog one is my potent one, analog two, port two is my uh, line one, my uh, analog three is my line 